Okay, so can you guys see my screen? Yeah, looks good. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for participating in this uh, workshop. And uh, because of the special request uh, of some you know, speakers, you know, my talk was uh, moved uh, a little bit earlier. And um, um, I'm going to uh, discuss in you know, the quasi 1D topology insulators today. And by quasi 1D and materials, this is just the materials definition and the, the materials are still uh, bulk materials. So basically uh, a one to us materials, but to stack in two directions. So namely uh, the material can be viewed as a uh, three, three dimensional stack or full one dimensional chains. And then there are two uh, stacking directions. Okay, so uh, uh, let me play. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, there are two, uh, three keywords, uh, quasi 1D, topological, and insulators. So uh, if we look for uh, this kind of materials, so the first thing we should do uh, nowadays probably is just look at the so-called topological materials database established by our previous speaker and uh, other colleagues. For example, in this, you know, three literature papers, all the materials in the uh, database have, have been topologically classified. So uh, if we use these three keywords, so probably the only material we can find is the bismuth bromide, and, and that is the only uh, quasi 1D topological insulator with a, a global gap bigger than 10 milli electron volt. And actually, uh, bismuth iodide, a similar material is, is classified as a triple insulator there, but actually this is a, a topological uh, insulator at high temperature and at low temperature, as we will see. So we, uh, for, for this reason, by quasi 1D, uh, topological insulators. So I really mean uh, bismuth bromide and bismuth iodide because they are so unique in the uh, database. And the uh, take home message today is, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this family of materials is really uh, unique. It has uh, very rich properties. And uh, uh, for example, there is a room temperature structure transition between a high temperature a weak topological insulator phase and a low temperature, high order topological insulator phase. And uh, uh, the magic here is, uh, is one of us materials with a very weak interlayer uh, coupling. And each model layer is actually a quantum spin hole insulator with a gap as large as uh, 250 milli electron volt, which is 10 times larger than our room temperature. And, uh, and, and in this system, uh, if we add you know, a, a small pressure, uh, the material can also superconduct. So I should point out that you know the the topological property in this uh, family of materials uh, can be uh, well understood by using a so-called surface uh, Sushvitar Higgins model to understand, which is uh, detailed in this uh, archive paper. Okay, and this is the most important uh, slide today, and uh, I really. Uh, uh, I want to you know, thank my collaborators, my, my, my first postdoc, you know, Chen Chen Liu, who initiated this uh, research in 2015, and uh, uh, my current postdoc, Chi Ho, who has been working on um, these materials, so topological properties in the past many years, and uh, have been you know, collaborating with our experimental collaborators uh, um, on a daily basis to, to confirm those you know, beautiful properties. And uh, that being said, you know, I also uh, grateful to have a group of wonderful collaborators, you know, me and Bob Bergino on doing spectroscopy studies and Jimmy Lau at Ohio State University doing um, a quantum transport, you know, and the fabric a field effect transistor device. You know, Zahir Hassan's group doing uh, tunneling measurements and uh, uh, my own, uh, my UTD colleague at Binu who uh, grow very high quality materials. And I also, you know, um, I feel guilty to these uh, students and, and postdocs, you know, who have been working, on, who have been working on these materials for years uh, with me, and but I'm still holding their manuscripts, even though the results are pretty uh, uh, interesting. Uh, hopefully, we'll get the uh, uh, thesis done very soon. Okay, so here is a figure I want to uh, use to uh, clarify our our notation today, and uh, um, think about this is a three-dimensional material. Uh, the, the plateau here, 
that is the uh, top surface. And uh, uh, the, the side here is uh, can be viewed as the side surface, okay? Between the two kinds of surfaces, there is a one dimensional boundary. And uh, uh, I will call that as a hinge. And uh, uh, down to the bottom of the figure, uh, there is a, a very beautiful beach. And, uh, and this is a one dimensional uh, boundary. So I will call that as, as edge. So uh, in this type of materials, what's special is uh, both the top and the side surfaces can be uh, naturally cleavage surfaces, and we, people can do experiments there. And the hinge state uh, here is also a, a cleavage hinge state. So there, there will be no dangling bounds to, to, to mess up the physics. Okay, so why uh, you know, topological boundary modes? And uh, I think you know, after uh, two decades of extensive study about uh, uh, topological insulators, I think people have their own answer. And here's my answer. So suppose I place you in, in, in the sands. So how many uh, days you would like to be there? And uh, on the other hand, if I place you in, you in the ocean, so how many uh, hours you would like to be there? However, you know, uh, some of you may, may just come back from vacation. And if I place you uh, on the boundary of the ocean and the sands, probably you want to stay there for a month, right? Okay. So then the, the other question is why we want in a quasi 1D a topological insulator. So uh, in 2015, there, there was a, a Nobel Prize you know, symposium. So in that symposium, you know, um, uh, uh, Jim Lee pointed out one fact. So he mentioned that there are, at that time, there, there were already over a dozen uh, materials which are strong topological insulator. But however, uh, there, there, there is no, there was no weak topological insulator then. And, and you know, of, of, of course, nowadays, you know, with the established topological materials database, probably the number of a strong, a strong topological insulator is over um, 500. Um, but for the weak TI, uh, if you really, you know, uh, search uh, the database, you, you might get, you know, uh, an answer roughly around five. But then if you hand those answers to uh, material growers, they probably will tell you, okay, I, I'm only, I only want to grow business broadline. Uh, other, all other or, or business iodine, all other materials are kind of not realistically um, uh, uh, growable. Okay, so that is the reason we look for quasi one D, and let's look at you know a weak TI. A weak TI, you know, uh, usually can be uh, thought as a, a stack of uh, a quantum spin hole insulator along the Z direction. And for example, uh, in the simplest case, and uh, uh, in the momentum space along the Z direction, at the two uh, high symmetry points, there will be a band inversion each. Okay, and that, you know, uh, if we uh, look at the, uh, let's say the top surface, which is uh, the, the lateral cleavage surface, right? Because we are talking about a stacked system and which is, is more or less the one uh, materials. The top surface, uh, in the top surface, you know, people uh, might want to, uh, you know, perform experiments there. And, but there, you know, uh, the two uh, uh, high symmetry points with band inversions will project to the same point. So therefore, uh, the consequence of their uh, topology band inversion will, will cancel out. Uh, as, 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 as a result, uh, the, the top surface state is completely gapped. So there is no uh, gap is the feature you can observe there. So therefore, even you have a, a weak TI like this, so how can you uh, confirm it in experiment? There is no way to do it, right? And, but however, if you project these two uh, uh, high symmetry points with band inversions to the side surface, for example, on the uh, 01, uh, 100 side surface, and then these two high symmetry points would be uh, at these two um, special points with a very large momentum separation uh, around the pi. So therefore, their consequence can, can, uh, can, can, can remain and without you know, uh, interference if the transition symmetry uh, is, uh, uh, is unbroken by average. So, uh, but however, if you know, for a one of us materials, we know the side surface is not good because there are a lot of dangling bounds. So those you know, uh, actual states would max up the uh, physics of weak TI. So, so for that reason, uh, a possible solution to uh, confirm a weak TI 
is to um, have a 3D material, which is a stack of 1D atomic chains. So because, you know, in this case, there will be two natural cuts. For example, uh, if the uh, chain direction is in the B direction, then O1 and 1O uh, uh, planes are uh, naturally uh, cleavable. Okay, this is the original motivation why we look for you know, quasi one T materials for weak TI uh, in 2015. And here just gave you some um, uh, real space uh, um, visualization for this kind of materials grow by my uh, colleague Bean. Uh, it's really quasi 1D and uh, uh, it, it feels like our, our hairs. It's very soft and uh, very long in the uh, chain direction and kind of uh, uh, narrow in the, two, uh, the other two directions. Okay, so, <laughs> excuse me. So for bismuth bromide and bismuth iodide, as I said, you know, it can be viewed a, a stack of atomic chain. So in this figure, the atomic chain is perpendicular to the screen, to the screen in the B direction. And what's interesting is uh, for this uh, family of materials, there are at least the two structure phases. So the alpha one at the low temperature, the beta one at high temperature. So the difference between them is the beta phase uh, basically is, is, is one layer per unit cell. The alpha phase has a dimerization in the Z direction. So namely uh, two layers per unit cell. And, and what interesting uh, here is uh, um, uh, there is a room temperature structure transition between alpha and the beta uh, in the uh, in, in the abysmus iodine. Okay, so here is experimental data. And uh, as you can see, this the transition is quite clear and which occurs at room temperature. So what's even more interesting is, you know, at uh, high temperature, the phase is a, is a weak TI. And at a low temperature, uh, the phase is actually a high order TI. Both of them are actually pretty rare in solid state. Uh, uh, in other words, you know, uh, if we change the uh, temperature, we can switch on and off the surface uh, conduction and hinge conduction uh, near the room temperature. And, and all the reason is because the fundamental building, building block of the material the O1 model layer is a, a very large gap quantum spin hole insulator. And, and uh, the interlayer coupling in the bulk is, is very small. It's way smaller than the, uh, than the 2D gap. So that is why we have a 3D um, a weak TI and high order TI in the beta phase and alpha phase uh, respectively. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question, Fran? Sure. If you go back to the last slide, I'm wondering, do we understand the hysteresis uh, curve you show? Uh, mm, this one? Right, this one, yes, yes. Do we understand why there's hysteresis or what, it, what are the causes? It is because the, 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 the structure transition is first order. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, very good question, yeah. Okay, so let, let's continue. And, uh, and this is, uh, uh, our calculation for a uh, more layer bismuth bromine. And uh, you might wonder this is, is a type binding calculation. No, this is actually a DFT calculation uh, using first principles. And the, the, as you can see, uh, the, 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 the 2D bulk gap is quite large, is around the light, is around the 300 uh, millikelvin, more than 10 times of room temperature. And within that gap, there is a very linear uh, Dirac cone, which is 1D the helical edge states. And if you look at a density state uh, in the gap, it is a constant. And the reason is because in one dimension, the, uh, const, uh, the density state is uh, uh, proportional to the inverse of uh, Fermi velocity. So in, in this linear case, the Fermi velocity is a constant uh, uh, versus energy. That's why you know, the density state is also a constant. And here is the uh, uh, experimental uh, data from uh, Zihar Hassan's group. And I think, you know, his postdoc uh, uh, will give a talk, you know, uh, uh, in an hour on, on the details about this. What I just want to mention is the following. And they actually measure the top surface of a bismuth bromine. And, uh, and uh, there are, of course, there are a, a lots of, you know, uh, step edge. Some, some of them are actually molar layers, step edge. Okay. And, and then if they, play, they place the tip at a 
a surface away from any uh, step edge. So what they observe is this uh, a blue curve. Okay, the blue curve shows that you know there is a a gap. Okay, that's the uh, 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 excuse me. Mm -hmm. So this gap is the uh, surface state gap, or you can think about it is the uh, the bow gap of, of of the 2D layer. But however, if if you play if they place the uh, the uh, SMT uh, right at on top of the um, uh, more layer step edge, so the there is a finite density density state uh, within the within the, uh, the the gap, and uh, at Fermi energy at Fermi energy there is a dip. And this deep is the uh, standard standard larger liquid behavior. And uh, uh, if they automatically fail, for example, a, a test now uh, a perpendicular to the uh, top surface, then uh, you know as you can see uh, the uh, desert state will will extremely reduced, and there is a gap uh, opening right at the Fermi energy, where the uh, desert state is, is exactly zero. So, so basically, this says uh, even though the probe system is still uh, 3D, but however, uh, using their defects, one can actually prove the more layer uh, is likely a room temperature quantum spin insulator. But of course, uh, this holy green uh, will have to be uh, demonstrated by uh, a quantum transport in a, a field effect like device using whole bus. So we, we do look forward to that. And the many group, groups are actually you know, uh, competing for that right now. And, and here is uh, 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 the superconductivity experiment in this system. Uh, if you gave a, a, a reasonable body of pressure, like a 23 gigapasta, and then you know, uh, in Bismarck's iodide system, uh, the TC is around 6 Kelvin. And if you add, you know, if you add a magnetic field, uh, uh, gradually you can kill the superconductivity completely at uh, 2.5 Tesla. So I should point out that, <coughs> excuse me, I should point out that you know 23 gigapascal is actually a very large pressure compared to, to our you know, ambient pressure. But however, uh, in the uh, field of high pressure physics, this is actually a, a small pressure. Just give you a one uh, one number. For a hydrogen and so for for hydrogen sulfide uh, or other you know hydrogen rich um, uh, materials, so, uh, when people try to create a superconductivity, the pressure they add to the system is over two hundred gigapascal. So this is uh, uh, ten times smaller than that. So this is the uh, superconductivity in bismuth iodide system under pressure. And uh, uh, so with this result, you know, as a theory, we can actually uh, easily predict that in bismuth bromide system, um, probably we can get in you know, a higher TC uh, under lower pressure. The reason is uh, a bromine atom is, uh, is much smaller than the iodine uh, atom, right? So there is intrinsic uh, chemical pressure already built in in bismuth bromide, bromide, bromide system. So therefore, uh, to uh, achieve superconductivity, the required pressure is actually low. So due to the time limitation, I'm not going to show you the real data. I just want to point out this nice experiment has been done by uh, John Goodenough at uh, UT Austin in the same year he won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. Okay, and, and then you know, let's look at you know, the, uh, the high temperature phase, which is a weak TI and confirmed by experiments. So after that, I will uh, you know, show you why the uh, low temperature phase, upper phase is a is a high order TI. Okay, so uh, here's a theory uh, for the business, uh, for the beta phase. So basically, you know, without considering spin orbital coupling, and the material itself is a band insulator. At the Fermi energy, uh, the bands are, uh, are at you know, the, the high symmetry points L and M. So L and M, they are along the Z direction. Uh, differ by a momentum kz equal to pi. So if we add you know a uh, 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 spin orbital coupling uh, to the calculation, then uh, we'll see you know the conduction and the valence bands are actually inverted, and inverted at two special points L and M points. So therefore, you know uh, this realizes the uh, elementary uh, weak TI uh, because this double band inversion, right? And here is the um, uh, the surface state calculation. 
uh, you know, uh, this is the the, uh, the, the the gap, and this is one surface Dirac cone at in the G bar. There is another surface Dirac cone at A bar. So this may not look like a Dirac cone because of the strong isotropy. But nevertheless, this is a quasi one D material. The Fermi, Fermi velocity uh, are different, you know, by one order of magnitude in different directions. That is why you know uh, there is a strong isotropy in this Dirac cone. But nevertheless, you know, uh, these two Dirac cones have to be uh, connected in between these two uh, points, and uh, where there will be a, a set of points in the band structure and uh, a one half singularity in denser states. So, uh, if you want to look at a Fermi surface uh, plot, let's let's see. You know, suppose we uh, go from a zero uh, a zero energy, which is here, which is below the lower uh, set of point. And the two, uh, let's say 30 mini volt, volt, which is above the higher uh, set of points. So there is a number of uh, lift transition that will occur uh, in this system. And what's interesting is, uh, um, you know, beyond the one half singularity, actually the, 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 the Fermi surface is open and uh, in between the Fermi surface are closed. And, uh, and because of uh, these two Dirac points at a different energy, if we put Fermi energy in between, you know, one can get a electron pocket here, but a, a hole pocket there. And as some special fine tuning energy, uh, there, there is a perfect uh, nesting between this pocket and that pocket. Okay, so uh, because the material is quasi 1D and very soft, perhaps the uli axial string uh, is, is a realistic, uh, you know, uh, tool that can be applied to the system. So if that's the case, and, uh, and the, the, our calculation shows that, uh, uh, if we apply a, a unitary, uh, the uniaxial uh, uh, stream to the system, uh, let's say along the A axis. So uh, what's interesting is if we compress the system, then the system tends to stable as a weak TI. Uh, if we you know, uh, enlarge the, enlarge, enlarge the uh, systems, then uh, stretch the system, then the system tend to be a strong TI. If we further uh, stretch the system, then the system becomes a, a normal insulator. And as you can see, the uh, uh, the string uh, level is not that large. It's just like a, uh, to to get a transition, for example, in bismuth bromide, and we only need like a, a one percent of the uh, a tensile strain. Okay, so now let's look at you know uh, the experimental uh, demonstration uh, on the uh, the weak TI and and by a, by a, a me and Bob Bargino. So uh, uh, this is the uh, material and uh, uh, the, this, this direction, okay, the KY direction is a chain direction. So uh, therefore the top surface and the side surface here, so both of them are cleavable. So uh, what we do is uh, we have uh, samples from the same batch and uh, for some of them, we uh, cleave the top surface and the shine a laser and the laser will be only on the top surface. For another uh, 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 a group of samples for the same batch, we cleave it. Uh, we cleave the side surface, and the, 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 we shine the uh, the laser uh, only to the side surface. Therefore, we can uh, separately observe the, uh, the surface features of these two uh, surfaces. And uh, you know, uh, these are the uh, kind of the signature. As you can see, they are quite different. So, uh, in the side surface, you already see this kind of a uh, quasi one D Fermi surface, which demonstrate this uh, material uh, is a one to one material along the along the Z direction. Okay, so um, uh, if we zoom in um, uh, for, uh, of the top surface and uh, look at the, the uh, energy momentum dispersion and at the gamma point, actually there is a, uh, there is a big gap. At the M point, there, there is a small band gap, which is around uh, 165 uh, millivolt. volt. So that says the top surface is a complete gap. It's a surface insulator. And now let's look at you know, the side surface. The side surface turns out uh, um, in the energy momentum dispersion, uh, we can identify two Dirac points at the uh, uh, gamma and the Z bar points respectively. And if we uh, zoom in further, uh, we can identify, you know, uh, the two Dirac points are actually at the different energies and which are different by uh, 30 millivolt. 
And then this is a kind of like a summary uh, cartoon uh, for the material at top surface, the surface state is complete gap. At side surface, uh, there are two uh, gap is Dirac cone. And because there are two gap is Dirac cone, actually uh, the, the band structure should look like this, right? And the one Dirac point and second Dirac point, and these two Dirac cone has to be connect at a, a, a some you know, energy and the, where there is a, a one half singularity in the uh, in the denser state uh, for the positive energy and for the uh, lacking energy. So basically, there are two uh, two sets of uh, set of points. And as a result, you know, uh, here is the kind of the um, uh, measured uh, Fermi surface, which is pretty much the same as what we predicted, you know, a number of years ago. And as we can see, beyond uh, above the uh, beyond or, or, or beyond the lower uh, one half singularity or above the higher one half singularity, the Fermi surface is completely open. And you know, uh, uh, and, and the, uh, uh, when if we place the Fermi energy in between the two Dirac points, and then we can get this uh, electron pocket here and the hole pocket uh, at the different symmetry points. And if we find the energy, we can make this uh, uh, two pockets perfect nesting. Okay, so for that reason, and um, and in this regime, that is a perfect you know uh, case to study a so-called coupled Langer liquid physics. And Stefan Wu is going to talk about uh, uh, a coupled Langer liquid physics uh, uh, in a more recent system and tomorrow. And but here, you know, really, you know, this is a is such a system without twist, but on the surface of a, a weak Ti, and you know. Um, for the one house singularity, we also know that you know this is a, a platform for a, a strongly correlated physics, as we all see in the past few years for the uh, topological Kagome metals and uh, twisted bilayer graphene, a rubberhedral um, stacked uh, multi layer graphene, uh, AB bilayer graphene. So all their you know all their uh, strongly correlated physics arise from you know one house singularity. So therefore, you know, at that particular you know, energy, the surface of weak TI is also, can also host in the many body of physics. That's a way to be discovered. And this uh, perfect lasting is an uh, 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 interesting case to look for, you know, excellent uh, condensation, of course, the indirect excellent condensation uh, without a laser. Okay, so, so with that, you know, um, um, a theory and experimental confirmation of weak TI uh, in the beta phase. So I'm going to move the uh, to the uh, alpha phase, which is a high order TI. And now I'm going to use the a, a surface suture Higgins model uh, to demonstrate that. Okay. So uh, before that, I just want to um, uh, um, uh, briefly introduce what is you know high order topological matter, uh, just in case some of the audience uh, do not have that kind of background. So, so basically, high order topological matter is uh, is a special uh, fancy latest uh, uh, phase that has a protonic gaping state only on boundary of more than one dimension node. So, what that mean? Let's look at this picture. So, for example, uh, in the first uh, panel, um, the bulk is uh, insulating. However, the surface is conducting. For example, bismuth satellite is a, uh, a first order topological insulator. And the weak TI we discussed just now is another type of first order uh, topological insulator. So in, in the second order one, and, uh, in this case, the, uh, not only the bulk is insulating, the surface is also insulating, but however, uh, between the different surfaces, there can be some uh, one dimensional boundaries, we call them as hinge. So the hinge can be, uh, can be uh, uh, Dirac-like without a gap, and therefore um, they can be uh, conducting channels. So this is uh, a second order TI. So the high order topological matter uh, in bismuth, uh, bromide, bismuth, iodide family. So what we mean is a, a second order uh, 3D uh, topological insulator with time versus symmetry. Okay. And uh, uh, just give you another example. So originally, and uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, phase of matter uh, was proposed by us in uh, 2013. And uh, the simplest way to think of to conceive such a phase is uh, look at just look at you know um, a bismuth satellite, a very standard you know uh, strong topological insulator. It has a, a gapless Dirac point at any surface. 
now let's try to break time versus symmetry uh, in this system. So uh, as a result, the surface uh, uh, state will, will have a gap open and that gap opening produce a, a produce a long travel, a half chain number, one half or minus one half depends on the direction of magnetization at the surface. So uh, if the two surfaces, you know, have different uh, uh, magnetization or magnetization, and then they can, and they can, there can be a, 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 a one dimensional chiral edge mode, you know, uh, in, in between these uh, uh, two surfaces. The reason is because uh, there is a half chain number here. There is a minus one half chain number here. The difference is, uh, is chain number one. That's why there can be a, 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 a chiral edge mode uh, here. Of course, the chiral edge mode cannot stop, right? It, it has to form a loop. So that, that, you know, whether the loop is on the, on the top or around the material, that depends on the detail of the magnetization of this strong TI. But nevertheless, this high line, uh, there is a simple way to understand so why there exists such a high order uh, phase. So uh, that is really uh, in 2013. And uh, of course, you know, the field really took off uh, because of uh, uh, the work by um, our previous speaker and his postdoc and many other colleagues around 2018, they generalized the idea to all kinds of uh, symmetry classes. And uh, do they uh, propose you know, uh, this beautiful name, high order uh, TI, and therefore the field took off. And, and what I want to uh, point out is, uh, is, is that, you know, uh, so far, for solid state for solid state materials, if you uh, look for uh, insulating materials, okay, or semiconducting materials, of, in the experimental sense, the only material that is a, a high order TI with time versus symmetry, so probably it is bismuth bromide and bismuth iodide, no other materials at all. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so uh, to introduce the uh, uh, the the Schwarzschild Higgs model at surface uh, to understand the uh, high order TI. So I just want to mention, and the building block, which is the uh, O1 model layer, and this is uh, a large gap quantum spin hole insulator. And uh, the interlayer uh, tunneling is way smaller uh, than the, uh, is way smaller than the uh, gap. So if you want numbers, the, uh, okay, the 2D gap is around uh, 200 millivolt. But however, the uh, interlayer uh, tunneling at the edge is just around 10 to 20 uh, millivolt. And that is why you know, the tunneling at the edge cannot you know, affect the bulk gap. Okay, so uh, let's look at you know, uh, this one. Uh, this is, uh, uh, see, the beta phase. The beta phase you know, uh, has uh, the, the, the feature of one layer per unit cell, and each layer is a large gap quantum spin hole insulator, and the, the system has inversion symmetry. And uh, uh, what's interesting is that we can place the inversion center not only at, uh, between the two layers, but also uh, at each uh, mod layer. So as a result, so uh, uh, the interlayer coupling at the edge are very uniform on, on each edge, or if you even you consider the two edge, the, the two surfaces, okay, the, the interlayer coupling everywhere needs to be the same. Because you know, if, if you place the inversion center here, uh, the inversion symmetry says, you know, this coupling and that coupling needs to be the same, right? And if you place the inversion center here, it says this coupling and that coupling needs to be the same. So therefore, if you apply the transition symmetry, so all the couplings on the left surface and uh, uh, those on the right surface, they have to be the same. And that's why, you know, uh, the, beta uh, the beta phase uh, can, be, can be considered as a, a critical point of a Schwer Higgins model. Of course, we apply this um, a celebrated model only on the surface, and the surface is coupled of helical edge states, right? So that because the surface is a is a critical point of this topology insulator, therefore it is a a, a, a weak TI with you know uh, with gapless Dirac Dirac home at uh, uh, kz equal to zero and kz equal to pi. Okay, that's how we understand. The, the weak TI uh, from the uh, mod layer and the weak interlayer uh, tunneling picture. Now, uh, let's look at, you know, bismuth uh, uh, bromide, uh, bismuth iodide alpha phase. So in this case, the system still have inversion symmetry, but however, the inversion symmetry is reduced 
and the inversion center can only be placed between the two layers. Therefore, the system has a dimerization already. And now let's look at you know, uh, uh, the role of this uh, uh, inversion center uh, being placed here. So if we place the inversion center here, it says the coupling here and here needs to be the same. If we place the here, it says this coupling and that coupling need to be the same. But however, there is no symmetry that relates you know, uh, this coupling and that coupling. And remember, the, the system has two layer per unit cell. The transitional symmetry only says this coupling and that coupling are the same, right? So therefore, uh, naturally, you know, uh, in, each surf in each side surfaces, there is a, a, a dimerization of the uh, helical edge states. And uh, as a result, the, 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 surface, uh, the surface state is, is, is gapped. Uh, the other feature is that, you know, because of the inversion center uh, is right here between the two layers, the dimerization pattern on the left side and, the and that on the right side have to be the same. So that means uh, if we uh, 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 terminate the, the top surface uh, right here, okay, right here. So uh, at the both side, at both sides, there will be, you know, hinge states. Uh, if we terminate right here at both sides, you know, there will be no hinge states. Okay, so there, this is our calculation. And uh, on the top panel, the, the green part shows the hinge state loop. So as I said, you know, uh, if you, we, look, we look at a top surface, you can have a, a, a hinge state loop or uh, there's no hinge state loop at all. Uh, the same is true for the uh, uh, bottom surface. So um, as a result, there are four uh, different scenarios for these materials, depends on how you uh, terminate the top and bottom surfaces. This is the case for bismuth iodide. And uh, uh, now let's look at you know, bismuth bromide. And uh, a bismuth bromide in the alpha phase you know, also has inversion symmetry. But however, unlike in the alpha phase of bismuth iodide, the inversion center is not here. Instead, it's at each smaller layer. Okay, so for example, if you place the inversion center right here, that says this coupling and that coupling have to be the same. And this coupling and that coupling have to be the same. So again, because of two layer per unit cell in nature, and there's no symmetry relates, you know, this coupling and that coupling. So therefore, at each side surface, there is a, a dimerization. And, uh, and therefore, the, the surface state is actually, is actually gapped. But however, because of this special uh, inversion center location, and, and the, the symmetry says, you know, the dimerization pattern on the left side and that on the right side have to be opposite. So that means uh, uh, if we uh, terminate the top surface uh, um, right here, right here, okay, and this is going to be a, a hinge state. If we terminate the top surface right here, and that one is going to be a hinge state. So uh, uh, namely, uh, no matter how we terminate the top surface, there will be always one and only one hinge state at top surface. And likewise for the uh, for the bottom surface. So therefore, there there will be you know four uh, scenarios for for this case, and uh, and in each scenario there will be only one hinge state on the top and the one hinge state on the bottom. And if you look at you know the band structure calculation right here, so uh, the black one are actually the gap to surface state. There's a gap around the uh, uh, around the uh, fifteen to twenty uh, millivolt, and in the gap there is. Uh, uh, you know, gap is the uh, uh, and the green one, which is the uh, 1D uh, gap is hinge states uh, shown in here. Of course, you know, uh, the precise feature of these, these uh, hinge states depends on how you terminate the top and bottom surfaces. And I should point out that, you know, uh, in a later materials paper last year, uh, they claim they identify the hinge state experimentally, but I have to say, you know, uh, uh, the data is correct, but however, their interpretation is wrong because uh, what they they basically observe is the gapped uh, uh, surface state. They do not have the resolution and to resolve this uh, uh, small gap, and they mistakenly in the thought of they observe you know a gap is hinge mode, but turns out what they observe is actually the uh, uh, a gap surface state and the without the resolution for the gap. And the other, uh, the other indication for, for, for what I claim is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, Zihar Hassan's group's uh, uh, tunnel experiment. They show, you know, for, for this kind of you know, hinge state, the, 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 the thickness 
or the penetration length is just like a, a two or three nanometer. Okay, so but in in in, in the later materials uh, uh, experiment in 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 the Japanese group, you know the the spatial resolution is more or less like a, is more than one hundred uh, nanometer. So therefore, and uh, uh, it is fair to say what they actually observe is the uh, surface state. Okay, so uh, with that, you know, uh, I'm just going to uh, summarize my talk. Is this picture? And this is near Aspen, and where we uh, first got the idea uh, to study bismuth bromide and bismuth iodide in 2015. And if we turn this uh, by 90 degree, and this is very like our band structure of bismuth bromide, and uh, the conduction band, uh, the valence band, and in between there is a, a bow gap. And in the bow gap uh, is, is, is not, you know, there are something interesting, right? Because the band gap can host a 2D surface state, 1D hinge state, or no state at all. So all depends on the structure phase, the pressure condition, and the temperature of the material. And uh, I should point out that, you know, uh, I, uh, this thing is also a platform for uh, many body physics in the future. So with that, I would like to uh, thank my uh, uh, collaborator uh, again. And uh, thank you all. Thank you, Fan, for the great talk. Uh, now we open for Q&A. Uh, please raise your hand. Or if you cannot raise your hand, just meet, unmute yourself and, and speak up. Um, okay, maybe I can... Okay, go ahead, Andre. Hi, sorry, just a quick uh, question. So all these phases, uh, you, you might have said it and I missed it. All these phases have inversion symmetry? Uh, yes, all of them have inversion symmetry. Uh, but however, the, the, the difference is... Uh, uh, you know, the beta phase has more inversion symmetry. Uh, for example, uh, you, you can place the inversion center right here and right here. But for the alpha phase, uh, in, in bismuth iodide, the inversion center is only between the two layers. But for the bismuth bromide alpha phase, the inversion center is, is in each layer. So, okay, the short answer is all of them have uh, inversion symmetries. And, 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 the, and, and the higher order topology is stabilized by inversion or if I break inversion there's if you still... break inversion and the, they, they, they still there and okay. I mean it really depends on I think in the field there are different definitions for high order topology so uh, if I only use the local uh, uh, the local language right the surface state uh, the, the laboring two surfaces uh, have gap um, and you know and the and the, 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 the gap is uh, the channel is 1d is a helical uh, gap is uh, 1D states. And therefore, if you break inversion symmetry uh, weakly, right, you, you wouldn't close the surface gap. And then you wouldn't open gap in the uh, 1D channel. Therefore, the hinge state is actually uh, stable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I have a question, Fan. So, uh, uh, you know, it seems that it, it, this system show very interesting sickness dependence behavior. I'm wondering what's the current experimental status in terms of cleaving or, or is, it, is it proper to say it in public? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think people haven't, haven't, uh, haven't got there yet. Um, okay. However, uh, if, you, if you think about STM and if you only look at the top surface, there, there will be step edge, right? So, so therefore, uh, uh, I, I should say, you know, uh, if you look at a two-layer step edge uh, on the left and on the right, they are different. Mm -hmm. And the two-layer right. and the, and the three-layer, they are also different. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I guess um, people are working on it and haven't get to the, yeah, the I, status, I think, yes. I, I, yeah. Uh, so, so it is, uh, yeah, I mean, probably for STM, they can only study in like a, uh, more layer step edge, bilayer step edge, or, or, or three, four layers, but for like a 20 layer, 21 layer, right. you know, yeah, it might be very challenging. But, uh, right, but right. For, for transport people, they, they like to have a you know, very flat surface, right? A very, very beautiful uh, thickness. So, so I have to say, you know, it, it is very interesting to study, you know, you know uh, these kind of features, but however, um, one need to think about uh, uh, we need to design experiments uh, uh, cleverly. Right, right. Um, I agree. Um, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, let's see if we have an uh, additional question from the audience. Um, uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, fun, is the super conductivity induced by pressure is for the alpha phase or the beta uh, phase? Uh, well, uh, they claim is, okay, all of the paper claim is, is the beta phase because the beta phase at that time, you know, they didn't know the alpha phase is high order TI. They only know the beta phase is weak TI. So they claim is, is beta phase. But um, uh, frankly, my understanding is uh, in, for this kind type of materials, if you have like a, a pressure as large as 20 gigapascal, it's, it's not going to be, it's going to be neither alpha nor beta. It's going to be a different structure. Okay, thank you. Um, great, due to the limitation of time, we should probably move on. If you have additional question, put it in the chat. I'm sure Fan will be happy to answer it. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fan.